what is this thing that we've called for the years TMJ? You know, I have a patient come in and they'll say, Doc, I've got TMJ. Well, so do I. You know, I mean, TMJ is an anatomical part of the human body. Is that a disease? No, it's not a disease. Patients don't know that. But it troubles me when I'll have a colleague call me and say, Dr. Roxon, I've got a TMJ patient I want to tell you about. The reason for that is because we're trying to simplify it so much. So I, I, I would tell them, listen, talk, listen to your patient. Ask your patients simply where they feel their pain. And there'll be some people who will come to you and they'll point right to that joint, hurts right there. And they're describing to you probably an intracapsular disorder. And that's a temporal, intracapsular temporal mandibular joint problem. But in our studies that we've done in our clinic, we've looked and we've called back, we've looked back at our records. Intracapsular problems are not the most common reason patients come to us. The ones that are more common are the ones that say, well, I have pain all around my face, a little more in the right, a little more in the left. And what they're describing to you is a more global pain condition, which is muscle pain. And muscle pain, at least in the population we have with the epidemiology we have, is almost twice as common as joint pain. Why would we call this a TMJ problem if this is really oriented for muscles? Well, here's the key. On the day we meet patients, if we can differentiate is this intracapsular or extracapsular, something important happens, we treat them differently. Because the etiology and, and, and the progression and management of muscle pain is different to joint pain. So if we want to help our patients in the area of musculoskeletal pain, we need to be able to make a differential diagnosis, which we haven't done very well. Now, in the classification that I have in my textbook, there's, there's several different classifications, but the one I have, which, was, which, what, which, is, which I've used for a while, we've got muscle pain conditions. We've got intracapsular conditions. We've got inflammatory conditions. We've got hypomobility conditions. And we've got growth disorders. All of those are musculoskeletal pains in the masculatory system. But are they all the same? No, this is five broad categories that we need to understand what's going on with the patient to be able to select the correct treatment. And if that patient has a growth disorder, please don't treat it like it's an intracapsular disorder. If that patient has an inflammatory disorder, please don't treat it like it's a muscle disorder. It will not work. And so we have to be able to say, when well, I meet this patient, it's which one of these categories is it from a temporal mandibular disorder standpoint? And then when we become a real student of TMD, we start to understand, them, understand something. Even the subcategories are important. That patient might have a disc displacement with reduction, without reduction. I manage them differently in my, in my, in my clinic. Muscle pain, it's not all the same. You know, sometimes there, there's, I, I say there's about five classifications of muscle pain. And there's local myalgia. And if you treat local myalgia like it's a central median myalgia, they don't get better. But worse than that, if you treat a central median myalgia like local myalgia, they can get worse. So understanding these conditions is taxing. I wish it were more simple. It's not. TM disorder is more complicated. But the point that we're trying to make here is, how could you call all that TMJ? Because if you call TMJ, you're suggesting, I don't understand the intricacy of just temporal mandibular disorders. It's more complicated than that. I wish it weren't. I'm not making up the rules. I'm presenting the rules as we see it, if you will. But now let's take us to the next level of thinking about pain in the face. We've got dental problems. We've got TM disorder pains. But what about the non-TMD pains? Non-TMD pains. You see, temporal mandibular disorders is only one subcategory of the big category that we start talking about oral facial pain. Now, I have a classification that, that I have in, in another, that's my second textbook on oral facial pain. This is the classification I use. And I know you can't really read this from, from your perspective very well at all, but all of these are conditions. All of these are conditions that will show up in patients that walk into a dental office holding their face in pain. Oh, I have pain right here, whatever. Okay. So all, this is more comp. Where does TMD fit? TMD fits here. It's a subcategory of oral facial pain. These are unique to dentistry. If a patient walks into a dental office with a musculoskeletal pain of the musculatory system, whether it's joint pain, muscle pain, or whatever, we dentists better understand that because we're the only healthcare provider that understands that and can manage that. So this we're obligated to our patients. But the point we're trying to make here with this new specialty is the rest of these are not primarily dental issues at all. And in fact, I need to say that even these TMD patients aren't all dental issues. They're not all occlusion issues for sure. But the dentist has the best knowledge, should have the best knowledge of how this masculatory system functions. But the others are not. 
And this is, is all of a sudden begins to understand why this, we have to look at this different. So the American Academy of Oral Facial Pain started to develop guidelines. The first guidelines we have started as what's called a white paper. And Chuck McNeil was highly involved in this. He was the one to put it together. And so in 1990, we started looking at temporomandibular disorders. I'm sorry. We started to look at cranial disorders, as it was called at that time, craniomandibular disorders. And there was two, two, uh, two of those criteria put out there. And they became known as national standards for treating temporal medieval disorders, if you will. I was kind of blessed to have the opportunity to edit the third edition of our guidelines. And we were able at that time to move the word oral facial pain. Let's take it out of just TMD. Let's take it out to the big picture, which is now classification for oral facial pain. And, and since we've done that, this guidelines and the future ones have become national and international standards on how we should diagnose and assess manage TM disorders. Then Dr. DeLeo took this over and had three more editions involved in taking this classification. And the last edition was, was assisted with Gary Klasser, who you'll be hearing from at the end of this talk and his own talk coming up. So what we've established here with the American Academy of Oral Facial Pain are guidelines which can be used for any individual to read about this and understand what's going on with pain conditions. Guidelines for the assessment, but also the management. What's the evidence saying should be, we should be managing these patients? So that's kind of like how it began. Why is it important to have a specialty? Well, here's why I think it's important. Because although these areas here are unique to dentistry, we still don't treat them well for our patients. There are many patients that come in there and we, you know, we have not trained our dentists well to understand the, even the complexity, if you will, of that. So the knee-jerk reaction in dental office, got TMJ making appliance. Is that fair to patients? I'd say it's not. Appliances are not indicated for some TM disorders. There may be some they are, maybe there's not. Changing inclusion, is that, is that indicated? Many of the TM disorders that we look at might not be indicated at all. I don't think we can rule it out completely in some patients, but this may, this is not the major problem that we were told or we told ourselves, I should say, as we went through these worlds of the mechanical dentistry and the understanding of pain. Now, the, the Commission on Accreditation finally has agreed that we need to teach dentists about TM disorders. That's basic information that every dentist should have. Okay. But the rest of this issue is, is a big time issue. All these oral facial pain conditions need to be identified and managed. And you know what? They haven't been in the past. They have not been. So we have a lack. We have patients that are out there. They've had years and years of pain. And we haven't had individuals who understand all the pain conditions to be able to help them. Then now it comes a time that we now are going to have more help for those patients. This is why we need a specialty of oral facial pain. It's just not for dentistry to understand that we have this special. It's for our patient population. As you'll learn, Laura, in the next session we'll have here, the epidemiology, how common is this condition? Pretty darn common. Most of the people I'm talking to right now probably know what I'm talking about because they've had some personal experiences. Hope not, hope not chronically, but acutely anyway, like that. So this is here for our patients. This is here, so it, I'll use this example. Over the, over the years, I get these emails from people or phone calls. Uh, Dr. Oakson, uh, uh, my name is Betty Smith, and I live in Timbuktu, and I have TMJ. How can I get help? And, and you know, the tendency to say, well, go to the internet and look up TMJ and go to one of those dentists. But the problem we face there is I have no idea what dentist I'm sending this patient to, what the knowledge base is. You know, it, have they merged the idea of dentistry and medicine together to, to, to help this patient? Or is it going to be just a very dental problem? Nowadays, as we start to have more and more of our specialty understood, we'll have more and more people who can help those patients that we can refer them to, if you will. So what do, what do oral facial pain uh, clinicians, clinicians actually do? What's their practice like? Well, I'd like to spend just a minute or two giving you some examples of some of the things that, that we do. This, if this is the whole group, the whole idea of, of the diagnostic categories, and I know this is this, this classification, I'm not saying this is the ideal classification. It's a, I think it's a teaching uh, 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 classification. But if all of this is out there, what are the areas that oral facial pain dentist does in his or her practice? Well, let's take a look at headaches. 
in all the pract- all the, cl- the programs that we have, headache is being taught. And what kind of headaches are taught? Well, migraine. You know, in our and I know in our facility right here, our residents, we have six full-time residents that are here, they're managing managing migraine with the board of medicines, with preventive medicines, with the new anti-CGRP uh, monoclone things, where the patients are actually injecting themselves once a month for headaches. So migraine headaches is something that oral facial pain dentists are being trained to treat. And our and this is not competing with our medical colleagues the neurologists, the internists, there's so many headaches out there that in fact, they need help. And some of our patients can't get into them that we need, we're here with information that certainly will help them. But headaches are complicated. The international headache classification, it, I counted at one time, has about 270 varieties of headaches in that one classification. We need to understand that because sometimes it's not as easy as we think to treat headaches. Migraine is one of those. And we're treating migraine with Botox, following the protocol that our colleagues in neurology and medicine and stuff are too. And there's a lot of patients that can get some help from things like Botox with migraine. There's a tension type headache, which is the most common headache that humans experience really. And this is not easy too. This is, this is not just one etiology, it's multiple etiologies. But some of that etiology might have to do with cervical and facial myofascial pain, and we can manage it that way. Some, sometimes it has a lot to do with a lot of the other elements and stress and tension and things like that. It's got to do with diet. It's, it's, a, it's got to do with so many factors, but this is pretty common. The most common headache that, that humans experience is, is a tension type. And about 70% of the patient, people in the, human, in, the, in the general population Understand this because they have at least one headache a year, which is typically a tension type. Rarely do we not ha- do have patients who never have headaches. And then there's some interesting conditions here that the oral facial pain dentist is learning about, like trigeminal autonomic cephalgias. And this is a unique headache. And I've got a patient I want to show you right now, which are some of the things that we're able to do now in oral facial pain. This is a 53-year-old gentleman. And I'm going to, I'm, I've, I've shortened this a little bit so you can get an idea, but this is 53 and he's suffering from what we call sunk, short lasting unilateral form headaches, attacks. And listen to what he tells okay. us. So let me ask you a question too. Where's your pain? Where do you feel most of the pain today? On the pretty much the entire right side of my face. Mm-hmm. And, and behind your eyes, where do you feel Behind too? my eye, uh, mid bridge of my nose, uh, my jaw, corner of my jaw, back in uh, my ear canal. Mm-hmm. And this this will have a pattern of some electrical kind of things yes. and shots. Just like and lightning like bolts. And will you feel that to your eye too? Yes. And how often do you have those? It can be just for a minute or two, an hour or two. It could be rapid fire and nonstop for days. Mm-hmm. And, and when that happens, your eye seems like it's closed on that side. Yes. So you'll feel that closes down for yeah. you like that. Uh, when it lets off my eye, like it releases and opens a little. Mm-hmm. And then when the pain hits, it will start closing. So this is a unique headache that, that has an autonomic effect to it. And you can see this person's eye right here. Can an oral facial pain dentist help this patient? Yes, we can. Most of us trained. This is, I've given, a, given, a, I've given a, 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 a sphenopalatine ganglion block, both sides of his nose, actually like that. What you're seeing on his face are, are little, little, tapes that will measure temperature because sometimes temperature changes are that way. But listen to what happened to this gentleman. Okay, so we've now completed two, super, uh, we've done the sphenopalatine ganglion block on both sides. And it was pretty painful on this right side to do that. Yes, it was. Mm-hmm. And the pain was felt behind your eye and radiating and, and quite painful. Very. Uh, but the pain level has quieted quite, quite down. Right? Yes, it's pretty much gone. And it was a seven out of 10 when we started. So now we have almost a zero out of 10 and both sides are comfortable. And if you, if we look carefully, his eye, the ptosis on his eye has left and we now have a pretty normal looking eye right there also. So that's kind of nice like that. So this is a unique headache that we dentists need to understand or we oral facial pain dentists understand because there's things we can do to help patients like this.